So the age of imperialism, this really stems from the age of exploration. And remember when we talked about the age of exploration, we talked about how Spain and Portugal and France and England had all taken um, to the seas to explore for new trade routes to India so that they could gain you know, raw materials, resources, spices, goods, and, and other items of, of value and of benefit. So with that, imperialism is when a country takes control over, over another country. And colo colonialism is taking a political control and economic control of a country by occupying it with settlers from that European country. Um, again, during the age of exploration, if you remember correctly, we talked about the three G's, God, gold, and glory, and that they were looking for new trade, trade routes to India for spices, goods, raw materials, and this is where the beginning of the globalization had started. So Europeans colonized these, the, the explored areas, and like, for example, Portugal built ports all around the western coast of Africa. And they had settlers making new lives in those colonized areas to ensure that the claim of the land was still there for that European nation. Control of the colonies increased by the 19th century. Some of these areas that the imperial, excuse me, imperial European countries were, of course, again, England, France, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, Italy, and Germany. And this... The idea that the Europeans had of doing this was to build their, their economy, to build their nation, and to make their nation great. Now, what areas did they imperialize and colonize? Well, the areas of Africa, all of the countries in Africa except for two, Liberia and Ethiopia. And then Asia, Middle East, India, China, Mongolia, Korea, all of these countries had been colonized by either European countries or Japan. Australia was colonized by the United Kingdom. South America, all the countries in South America were colonized by mostly Spain, Portugal, and France. The Pacific Islands and the Caribbean Islands were also colonized by Europeans um, and some by Japan because Japan did play a role in, in imperialization. So here's the deal. Oh, excuse me. There are three motives of imperialism. Now, like we've talked about with the age of exploration, the three God, gold, and glory, the three G's, the three reasons for exploration to take place. There are three main reasons for imperialism to take place. And these were the reasons that that really pushed. The, the European countries to continue to try and build this great empire that they were they were really looking to do. So the first one is the economic motive. Europeans are looking for raw materials for their factory systems. We just finished talking about the, the Industrial Revolution. And with the Industrial Revolution, there are materials such as coal, steam, water, wood, that are going to need to be used to power the factory industries. Well, these European countries were industrializing, but they needed raw materials that their country did not necessarily have in order to fuel and continue to, to push forward in the industrialization. Some of these raw materials that were used to fuel the industrialization was wood, rubber, cotton, ivory. And as I said before, iron, ore, coal, many elements that cannot necessarily be found in most European countries, but they can be found, again, on other continents and in other countries. So Europe set out to find these raw materials and really allow their industrialization to expand on them. The political move was a push for one's country to be the best. European countries at this time were focusing on nationalism the pride in one's country, the fact that one's country was the best of all. And so with that, the, the, it was a race 
to gain colonies, to gain power, and to gain resources. Essentially, was that political move. The more colonies a European country could, could gain meant the more money, the more resources, the more power. And in all of that, all the three of those, the more power, equal, the more money, resources, and power equals the powerful country. Then third, the cultural motive. It was a push to spread European culture and ideas because they believed they were to believe to be superior to the lesser countries. So if they were, were colonizing a particular country, let's say Great Britain or the United Kingdom, which is the same thing, colonized South Africa. South Africa at the time was a lesser country. And when Great Britain went in to colonize, they took over everything. This is why South Amer or South Africans, excuse me, can speak English or Old English as is, is their dialect. So they can speak English because they were colonized by Great Britain. In Somalia, they speak French, I believe. And why? Because Somalia was colonized by France. And so the native language then became French. Why does Brazil speak Portuguese? They speak Portuguese because the Portu Portuguese colonized Brazil. And then with that, the, the native language then became Portuguese or the official language became Portuguese. So you're looking at all of these countries that we kind of wonder why, why, why can they speak English or why do they also speak French? You know, why do the Philippines, why is the native native language for uh, Philippines, either American English or Spanish and French because they were all colonized over there. So you're looking at this idea that it was extremely important and the push for superiority to colonize the lesser, the, the less civilized nations. Um, during this time and it was also a push to spread christianity that was their big their their big make it okay reason is they were spreading christianity and they were spreading they were bringing bringing savage nations um to become more civilized or, or allowing them to become more civilized by sharing their culture and their ideas with them the thing about that is is that the the european idea at that time was to spread their ideas and culture, but not open up their minds to the ideas and cultures of those that they were colonizing. So white man's burden is an idea that the Europeans or the, the, the white Europeans, the civilized Europeans had the duty to spread Western civilized culture and ideas around the world, that it was their, their honor, their burden to share these ideas. They had to make people more civilized so that they weren't savages and they could be part of the proper human race was their idea, really and truly. Does it make it okay? No, not in the least. Not in the least. All right, so one of the most prevalent uh, events that took place during imperialism was the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885. Now, this meeting was a meeting that took place in Berlin, Germany, in 1884 to 1885. But it was a conference or a meeting of major European countries. The European leaders came together in Berlin to divide up Africa amongst themselves, all for the purpose of resources that were going to benefit their country. The more colonies that they could gain from Africa, the more powerful their countries could be. But they had to, a degree, to agree and discuss the situation before wars broke out between the European countries. Now at this time, the Africans did not, there was not one African representative, not from any of the countries in Africa. Did they have a tribal representation or a native representation? during this time in this meeting. So this was all European led ideas and decisions being made. The African natives and tribes did not have a say 
in the choice of the matter um, as to whether or not they wanted to be colonized. The Europeans were just coming in and taking over whether the, the natives liked it or not. And this just wasn't the scramble for Africa and the Berlin Conference, yes, was all over Africa. However, when we're talking about colonization and the Europeans colonizing, it was not just Africa they colonized. They colonized areas in Asia. They colonized areas in South America. They colonized Australia. And when they did this, they did not give the natives or the tribes in those areas a choice as to whether or not they were coming in and taking over. They just came in and did what they wanted to. So during this meeting, or after this meeting, excuse me, and the Scramble for Africa is also known as the Berlin Conference. It was the fight, it was the decision, it was the discussion, it was the argument over who was getting what. And what I mean by that is in Belgium, King Leopold took control or, or requested control of the Congo. It was the largest territory in Africa at that time. And he requested it because it provided all the resources that his country needed for their industrialization. And it was going to bring in a great amount of income because it had rubber, it had coal, it had iron, it had diamonds and emeralds and sapphires, it, it had metallic elements. It was very, very, very heavy in the raw materials and Belgium and was going to um, gain gain money on all of that, essentially. So they would argue over these areas. South Africa, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, all went to Great Britain. Why? Because of the resources that they, they had. Australia, Great Britain colonized Australia, but when they did, it was not necessarily, it did have resources, but what they used Australia for was to exile all of their criminals and debtors and murderers and, all, and they sent them to Australia just to make room for the civilized in the United Kingdom. So, and this again is why Australia has so much of an English accent is because they were colonized by the United Kingdom. So, when this took place, the European countries installed their government in the new claimed colonies of Africa or really wherever they were colonizing at the time. They brought in their government, they brought in their ideas, they brought in their values, their culture, their economy, and they pushed it into that colony without giving the colony or the natives and tribes of that colony any choice. And then the African natives and tribes were stripped of all of their traditional structure. Their, their traditional government was gone, their traditional lands were gone, their celebrations were gone, their history was essentially wiped out. Their language was wiped out when the Europeans came in to, to colonize and imperialize. So, and then when this happened, many European rulers ruled their colony with an iron fist. King Leopold, again, the king of Belgium, he used what we call fear-mongering, and he wasn't the only one. He's just the most notable one to use this. And what fear-mongering is, is deliberately using fear to get people to do your bidding. And King Leopold allowed his people of Belgium that were working and living in the colonies and to force this fear upon the natives, to force them to dig, to cut down trees, to do whatever forced labor they were they wanted them to, the Belgian people who worked in that area, or the soldiers, were able to use the fear of, I will hurt your family, I will hurt you, I will burn down your homes, I will burn down your lands, I will take your life. And by using that fear, the natives became the workforce, they became the slave laborers, and yes, it is a form of slavery as to what took place over there with the natives. Not necessarily the slave trade, or the sla sla transatlantic slave trade as we've discussed before, but definitely a forced slave labor to gain access to that raw material 
that the Europeans were looking for, that they were willing to strip from the land, but they didn't necessarily know how to take, so they used the natives to take the raw materials for them. Now, the effects of imperialism. So the land was taken from natives and claimed by the Europeans as their own. And the natives were forced to work for Europeans. The work conditions were terrible and dangerous. Again, it was a form of slave labor the way that they were treating the, the natives. And no, they were not getting paid for this, nor were they, they getting any kickback for this. They were being forced to mine and strip the raw materials for their Europeans, but getting nothing in return. Um, the, the Europeans did not give money or education back to the colonies for support. So imperial countries just took what they wanted. Um, and the problem with that is the lack of money and the lack of educational support did not allow for those colonized countries to move forward once the European countries were done with them. So once the raw materials were fully stripped, or once Europe uh, or the European country could no longer maintain the colony, they just up and left. And when they upped and left, they did not give give the colony any money, any governmental guidance of any kind. And therefore, they were not able to, to move forward. And as we can see here, the imperialism began to come to an end by World War II because of the cost of the war. Um, European countries couldn't maintain, because there was only over 30 countries that were involved in World War II. And the European countries could not maintain the colonies at the time. So they were just up and leaving. And when they did, they took everything with them, including the knowledge and the education of how to use the resources to one's benefit. The, the European colonies did not put any industrialization in, excuse me, the European countries did not put any industrialization into these colonies whatsoever. So all the raw materials were either stripped or could not be used for anything. And, they, and the, the natives did not know how to profit on anything that was left and could not rebuild because now you have an unstable government, you have an unstable economy, and you have raw materials or a lack of raw materials that are not going to allow you to gain access to anything like that. And then, of course, you know, many of the colonies also rebelled and fought for independence, such as India. Um, now, we could say that there are advantages to imperialism. I'm not sure how you say that there are advantages to imperialism, but you could say that. When the European countries came in to, to colonize, they did bring with them transportation systems, water systems, communication systems, electricity, and education systems. But again, when those European countries left those colonies or the colonies gained independence from them, this is all they had left. They had no money to move forward. They had no education to move forward on it. And the governments in many of these countries were so unstable that they could not find support within the government realm to help them out. So this is how we look at you know, the countries in Africa, um, and we wonder why all the time, how is Africa such a third world country when it, it is like, it has an abundance of resources. And the reason for that is because they don't have the money, they don't have this, the government stability, and they don't necessarily have the education to to really move forward why because of the age of imperialism india has been able to move forward somewhat they're still a little bit behind but they are moving technology technologically um, forward um, and they have gained quite a bit of ground there are a few countries in africa that are starting to to gain ground with it south africa is kenya excuse me, 
Those are the leading ones. South America, kind of the same thing. Um, they're trying, but they still haven't been able to get fully there where the United States and many of the Western European countries are today. Um, and this struggle is due to the effects of what imperialism brought on those continents and countries that were imperialized by the Europeans. Now, the disadvantages of imperialism, lost resources, labor exploited, meaning slave labor, unfair taxes on the natives and the tribes, lack of industrialization, and then, of course, broken cultures, societies, and values, traditional values of the South American, the African, the Australian, and the Asian continents. Imperialism does still exist today. Uh, the United Kingdom still has 14 colonies throughout the world. Um, and there are still several areas of imperialism. However, it is not as prevalent as it once was during the 19th century.